welcome to Agoracom Beyond the Pictures, because we've never done this before. This could be an interview in which we're going to show you some amazing pictures and video to watch Royal Helium in action. On the screen with us, Dean Nawada, employee number two and head of biz dev at Royal Helium. For those new to the story, I'm just going to give you a little bit because you're probably wondering what's with the astronaut behind Dean. Well, if you love the new space race, you're going to love knowing that rocket launch activity in 2022 reached a new record with nearly a liftoff every single week. And launch traffic in 2023 is expected to continue even higher than that. Why is that relevant to Royal Helium? How's that tie in? Well, it's critical for this interview because Royal Helium has signed a supply agreement with a major space launch company. They didn't announce the name, but us on our end, some snoops you know, around the web have narrowed it down to one of NASA, you know, the NASA, SpaceX, which is Musk, Elon Musk's company, or Blue Origin, which is Jeff Bezos' company. And that's because Helium plays a critical role in space launches. Now, in addition to that, on May 26th, they signed a, an off-take sales agreement, a second one, for the remainder of their refined helium production. So the space launch company took about half, and then the second off-take agreement took the other half. As a result, in mid-June, the company announced they awarded the installation contracts for the helium processing facility, and they began transporting helium processing, the, the helium processing plant, to their Steveville site. Well, for most of us, including me, we don't know what that really means, right? We've never seen a helium plant before. We've never seen a helium site. So Dean has taken to Twitter, put up some amazing photos, some amazing videos. So we decided, hey, let's put it all into one interview so that we could we could show everybody at the same time. Dean could narrate it. Dean, welcome to Agoracom for the first time, buddy. Hey, thanks a lot, George. We've known each other for quite some time, and it's 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 great to be doing this with you. Yeah, long overdue. And I got to tell you, you're a master of Twitter because you're not a guy who just puts up press releases and puts out regular corporate jargon. Almost every tweet you put up is full of something really informative that helps investors. And I got to tell you, seeing the reaction of so many people on Twitter, including me, every time you put up a photo of something, transport trucks with the, with the company's logo on it, these big, massive pieces of equipment that half of us don't even know what they do, it's a thrill because for the first time for a lot of small cap investors, we're seeing a, a plant come to life and you're bringing to life for us. So, you know, you're going to take us through this. I'm going to hand over the show to you. But before we do that, just give everyone maybe a two minute update. How is the plant uh, uh, construction coming? When do we think production will start ballpark? We're not going to hold you to dates, but how's the whole progress going on that side? Already, uh, no things are going really, really well, and um, the, the the timing is perfect to start this type of video with you, George. Uh, you'll see in a couple of pictures that I show you, it's right up to date. Uh, in other words, uh, our Amy unit just showed up. I'll show you pictures of it yesterday. So that's how up to date nice. we are. Uh, just to be clear, um, uh, the plant is actually was actually being fabricated in Nisku, Alberta, which is essentially at the Edmonton International Airport, right across the highway. Right. So that's kind of where that's located. <clears throat> so that's been in, in, in process now since so approximately November of last year. And as you'll see in the pictures, I mean, this is no small, no. you know, widget thing that they're putting together here. So they're doing a fantastic job. And I think the sh pictures will show that. So at this stage of the game, um, most of the, the fabrication is done. Um, there's, there are still some of the mod modules that are being completed and whatnot. But while those are being completed, they're making the journey down to Brooks, Alberta. So to give you an idea, it's what call it a two hour drive from Edmonton to Calgary. And then from Calgary to Brooks is another two hours in really round numbers. So uh, this equipment, as opposed to having it all stay over in, in Edmonton until everything's done and then start shipping, that doesn't make any sense. So uh, we started uh, transporting some of these modules, I guess maybe about two weeks ago now or so. But George, some of these things are like huge. The one that you'll see that arrived yesterday it's, you know, it takes up both lanes. It's 77 feet long. 
they had to have a lead truck from Fortis, which is the electrical utility company here in Alberta, like lead the truck and lift the power lines. Wow. <laughs> this is serious stuff. It's it like is. you're transporting a spaceship on its own, right? When you transport yeah. a spaceship Amazing. to Canaveral Just, to get it going. Yeah. So uh, obviously before all that, uh, there was construction on site. They leveled and burned the ground, which you'll see. Um, um and, and started laying you know sort of the groundwork which i'll show you and these big modules will come and they're craned onto and they sit on top of pilings or they look like metal feet except they're they're oh what was it uh 20 meters deep into the ground those feet that these things sit on so but I'll, I'll show you that. So yeah, that's serious, kind of where we're serious, at. And this is a real treat for all of us to yeah. see this and to get yeah. your narration with it is a yeah. real treat, Dean, I'm telling you. Oh, thanks. thanks. So, you know, definitely don't ever want to shoot myself in the foot here as to trying to sort of give timelines. But to give you an idea, and you'll see in the slides, a good chunk of all the equipment is or modules have arrived. and. Um, you know, where, you know, where are we now? Mid, late July, you know, you know, I think it's numbered in, in, in weeks, George. Nice. That's great to hear. Not, not, not months, if, if, if I want to sort of put it to you that way, but that's just the stage that we're at. And, 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 you know, don't forget that this particular plant that we're building is not new technology. Yes, there's some proprietary things that have been added to it, uh, but the principle itself is the same type of uh, processing plant that's been used for decades here in, in the province. Largely, well, no, 100% uh, for processing natural gas. So it's the same process, except that we're processing, instead of processing natural gas with a little bit of byproduct of, of helium. Well, actually Alberta hasn't been doing it yet, but uh, uh, other byproducts, it's the same plant, but what you're doing is you're producing the helium with maybe a little bit of byproduct of, of, of natural gas or CO2 or whatever. So it's all kind of the same principle. Um, so yeah, so you don't have any space. execution risk per se. I mean, there's always, the the unknown unknowns of course that can happen in anything i could be building a computer on my desk and something small can go wrong but yeah. for the most part uh you don't have any real risk of hate with george we're building something totally new it's never been done before uh and we hope it works uh yeah this is, this is tried and tested technology and and process sure and so um you know for example our, our fabricators i mean the, the, there are many uh, fabricators here in the province, a lot of them at, in, in NISCU that that build these things for natural gas uh, facilities. So, yeah, it's really not that new, but this is will be the first helium processing plant in Alberta. Nice. Yeah. So, if you want to place risk anywhere, this is just like any other resource play. Uh, I don't think it rests at all on the plant. It'll be the wells. But having said that, uh, we as a company always had a mandate to make sure that the wells that we're producing, we got a third party reservoir engineer look at it, do a report, do their studies, they figure out how, how much to choke these things back to get optimal performance from these wells, how long are they going to last, uh, how much gas is potentially in there um, in those type of things. So, and, you know, we had um, uh, GLJ and uh, 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 IHS market uh, do that. So, and they're a couple of the premier reservoir engineers in, in the province, which means being here in Calgary is, is, is like premier in the world for for reservoir engineering. So we're, we're, we're quite confident, confident. Yeah, you're not cutting corners. You're well-funded. Uh, we all know that. Well, you've been backed by some pretty great financing and, and that means you can have the best of the best and you're not asking George to see yeah. if you can nope, nope. Uh, As you've seen on Twitter, I've, I've said it over and over and over again. 
we step through every single step. You drill it, you case it, you test it. You get a third party bona fide reservoir engineer to look at it, full blown report. Uh, as I say, optimizing the wells. These, these particular wells are fairly high flow, high pressure wells relative to some of the ones that we have in Saskatchewan. Um, so, you know, essentially you're, you're basically choking the well back. Like if you just let it flow open and it's so much pressure, you can actually ruin the reservoir. So yes. all of that has been it, all of that's been engineered and included in this George as well is, is, is the fact that um, uh, we work very hard to get those two uh, offtake contracts. Um, that's very, very important in the helium business because you can't store helium for very long. Yeah, Therefore, that's crazy this, too. You've already got your full production uh, just at Steeville already sold out. So you're not you're you're not hoping for someone to buy this. You've got you've got your two customers just waiting. Yep. Up. So yeah. Nice, so nice to have. when you know once you get it up and running, presumably it, it, it's going to run 24 seven, 365 days. Not exactly because there will be downtime for maintenance. You know, a couple times a year. But but the bottom line is you're not turning the plant on and off, you know, to go fill somebody up. It, yeah, uh, you, you can't do that because you can't. There's store no it. gas station. There's no gas yeah, station. Yeah. It's running twenty four seven. Exactly. So uh, what I did, George, is I I, um, uh, I put together uh, some photos and some videos. Uh, it's by no means all of the equipment, but I wanted to show uh how big these things are and what goes into them so i'll show you some pictures like earlier and then a little bit later and to start with i'll, I'll play just a few seconds of a video uh that we just put out and it's a drone video from up in the air so you can actually i'll be able to explain to you how these things fit together then we could take a little closer look Beautiful. at some individual items take it away my man okay See if Dean does this right. All righty. There we go. Okay. Well, so here we are in um, Brooks, Alberta. So it's about a two hour drive so east of, of Calgary um, toward, toward Saskatchewan, basically. So I'll just play a little bit of this, maybe. Yeah, okay. there it goes. We've got liftoff. <laughs> so this road that you see there, you know, you're only five minutes, seven minutes from the highway. And that's 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 the location right there, right? Correct. All the pieces so what I, into this. Yeah, what I wanted to show you is a couple of different things. Number one is, uh, so, the south well, the actual well, and I'll show you a picture of that, is about 200 meters to the south here. And there's a pipeline that goes underground and as in right here. That's, nice. that's what we call a well riser. So that's where the helium actually enters the site. The second riser right here, it goes this way, uh, but it's actually about seven or eight kilometers underground pipe to the second well. Okay, so that's that. That's where the helium enters the site, basically all underground. The second thing is this was basically the first thing that showed up on site. It came in. Go use sessions. your cursor if you can, Dean. Um, use your cursor. Okay, carry on. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So this it was the first thing to arrive, and it came in two pieces. It's 180 feet long. Okay. And it's called a pipe rack. So what it does is it acts like the backbone to this entire plant. Um, Looks like this a module. Exactly. So this module here, uh, and I've got a video, it, it's the, the, the fuel gas module. So what it does is there's uh, a few percent uh, uh, natural gas in the, in, the, in the stream. We're taking that out and we're actually producing uh, power to power the whole plant. And this is one of the reasons that the operating expense of this facility is so low 
it's basically self-powered, I guess is another way to put it. Beautiful. So what you notice here, these are those pilings I was talking about. So yeah. the, these are these iron, I guess, footings, if you will. So they're all preset out. And so as each model module comes, each mod sits on the, its appropriate uh, footings, you know, be it there or be it, you know, right here. This is actually where the aiming module's gonna go. That's why the footings are bigger because it's the biggest component. And what happens is, is there's a special connector module that's just a set of pipes that match up to the backbone to the unit and it slides in the middle and they just hook it up. And then the other one hooks up here, another one hooks up here. So all of these pilings that you see here are all set. Like the generators are gonna sit on these pilings, for example, and I'll show you pictures of that. So it's all preset, kind of like a Lego system. I was just all thinking along. that. It just feels like Lego, just gonna snap on. Yeah. Yeah. All along, all along this this spine or this backbone. Uh, here's just the, our offices, and this is how you get in, go out to the highway that way. So this video, Thanks, by the way, is is on YouTube. Um, pick it up on Twitter. You can watch the whole thing. Um, well, the great thing about watching yeah. with you is this narration, right? Because I could have watched this video yeah. on Twitter, and I get the general gist of what I'm looking at. But you know, you're telling me where one well is coming from 200 meters away, where the other one's come from eight kilometers away, how it feeds into the spine, how you're taking out the natural gas to power the place. I mean, that's just invaluable, Dean. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard because, you know, these little black dots may look like, well, what are the, maybe they're people or what, what are they? But uh, yeah, they're, they're, those footings, they're, they're, they're major. Don't quote me, but I think they're like 20, 30 meters down these big metal pipes that all of these, these these mods sit on. Okay, I'll go on to that here. That was awesome, dude. Okay, so uh, this video or photo was taken maybe a month ago or so. So the only mod that's on site is this one, the fuel gas module. This is the uh, uh, instrument air uh, mod. Uh, that's for. Um, Emergency shutdown and everything, it's all powered by air uh, um, just for safety purposes. So, where are we today? Uh, this is pretty close to today. So, this photo, um, I'm standing on the south side looking north. Oh, that's and important. To give you actually took a lot of these pictures. You went down Oops, there sorry, yourself sorry. And, you and you took these pictures. Some have been sent to you by the team, but it's amazing that, you know, these are, these are done. That's how serious you're taking this. You're, you're there yourself. Yeah. 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 Me and Spiro were, we were here on site. So in that previous video, I showed you where the helium wells, the pipe comes into site. That's right here. Off to the left in the background here, you'll see those are six, um, uh, power generators. So that's where the power comes from. Uh, this just landed, uh, just to give you an idea then, kind of in this area uh, will be where the, the trailers come in uh, to pick up the helium. So if you get, get my gist, the helium comes in yeah. here on the left-hand side, uh, goes through the processing plant along the backbone there through all of the mods that are there yet. Um, and then it's picked up on the right-hand side here. In essence, Dean, so, it's like a massive conveyor belt, right? That we've seen you. Yeah. Feed the empty on you know, one side, it, it gets filled, and then you pick it up and take it away on the other side. Sure. So here I am standing on the other side now. So I'm on the north side looking south. So those wellheads are over here somewhere. Those are those power generators, right? So it's opposite. The, where the trailers will will eventually pick up the helium is now on this side. Uh, this module here is called a heat medium. Um, the uh, so the fuel gas unit is right there. That was in the video. That was the only sort of mod on the video at the time. 
So you can see how it's really filling in, like basically a land this here, and that'll be hooked up to that back row, backbone. Here's a close up of sort of this right hand side here. Uh, those are the power generators. Uh, you can't quite see. So those. But even seeing the power generators just on their own is awesome yeah. because, again, it just brings Steveville to life right in front of us. You know, this sure. is real. The game is real. Anybody, not that very many people, anybody have any doubt as to Royal Helium's ability to execute, it's happening right in front of our eyes. Exactly. So these things are still on their trailers at the moment. But these will be mounted on top of right. their, appro their appropriate pilings. And then there's special uh, pre-made uh, connector units. So they just basically plug in and it plugs into the, into the uh, backbone there. Um, again, this is a little bit earlier. This is the fuel gas module that is now now lifted from the truck as it came, now it sits in its appropriate spot along the, 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 the spine. And Dean, if I may, just going back for one second, what really mm -hmm. stands out to me about that is the scale, because you see a, a worker there standing right in front of it. Uh, I'm gonna assume that person's, you know, at the very least, like five foot 10, you know, average height or something like that. And and the unit almost is, is for sure double, double their size. So this is, this is major equipment here. Sure, and this is this is the smallest the smallest module. Wow. Yeah. So, just to walk through, this is a little bit of a video. So where I'm standing is I'm going to walk underneath that that backbone. Right. And there's Spiro. And there's Spiro. So see, there's the fuel gas. Now it's in place. Looks beautiful. I, wow, that I looks like that looks like a piece of art. That looks like a piece okay, of art. See, see in between there, see the open valves there. Right. There's an actual pre-made unit that goes in between the two, and you bolt this side on and bolt this side on. It's all preset exactly. The the connectors are all in the oh, exact dude. right place, and you just you, you just bolt her on. I have problems sometimes okay. with a picture in my house, so I can't imagine expertise on that. So now I'll just step back a little bit. So this is a lot earlier. This is a couple of months ago. I took this photo just because it looks cool. It looks like an alien spaceship or something. It does. But, <laughs> but this is part of the, uh, uh, the um, uh, it, it, it's a, a YouTube uh a heat exchanger and this is part of the amine unit which which i'll show you in a second and but that's yeah, a serious it, piece of metal because we've all bent a spoon and we know how hard it is that looks yeah, like oiled oiled yeah. uh, steel yeah those are tubes and it was it was it was manufactured or fabricated here um part of the internal components so how, yeah, long, is that, this, how long is that that one there, I don't quote me, but I think it's uh, thirty-five feet or something, or thirty feet. Um, so I took this photo, I put it up on Twitter, and 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 I actually got uh, pinged by some engineering magazine in the states, and and they used it. There you go. That's why well, you're the master. I mean, you you put up stuff that's really unique, not just say not just the same old thing. Yeah. Okay, so here's the amine unit, Let's see, of which this is part of. You can actually see it sticking out there. So this actually just arrived on site. So this is at the fabrication facility near Edmonton. Just to give you an idea, that building there, and I'll show you the inside of it, but it's 77 feet long, 24 feet wide, uh, 23 feet wide and 24 and a bit feet high. We just transported this yesterday. It basically takes up two lanes on the highway. We had to have a lead car and permits with Fortis, who's the electrical utility here in Alberta, to lead the truck and they had to lift the power lines for it to get under. That's how big this thing is. And you had to take a route to make sure the bridges would fit you, right? You didn't want to, yeah. you want to do what they did in Philadelphia, which is wipe out a bridge. 
Yeah. So uh, in addition to that, this is also part of the aiming unit. And, and these are towers. There's two of them. They're 65 feet high. And they actually bolt onto the top of this thing. So this building with the two towers sticking up, it's going to end up being over 100 feet tall. It's 10 it's stories. Tough. 10 stories. So if, you know, I had no idea when you guys, when we start our interviews way back, we talked about the Steveville plant and things like that. I wasn't sure what to expect, but it wasn't of this magnitude. Maybe I'm a city boy and I should know better. Maybe some guys are laughing at me because they knew better because uh, they got more experience. But this is... This feels like we could film a space movie here, pardon the pun, because you've got that great background and we've got the contract with the with the space launch yeah. company. But it feels like this could be the set of a Hollywood movie while you're at it. That's how big yeah. these, these things are. Yeah, every, and everything here is done so professionally. I mean, this facility is huge, but like each of the areas, they've got this, this, this has got the drawings and the plans all set. Every, every station has got all the engineering plans and everything set out for, for, for the workers. It's just fantastic. So here's a, a, a picture a little bit earlier, um, maybe about a month and a half earlier than that, uh, just to show you what's inside that building. Like it looks like a big building. So it's basically two floors high. So there's a walkway up here, right? Oh boy. Don't ask me, don't ask me what all this stuff does. But again, it's 77 feet long, 24 feet high. And uh, those, weighs, those, it weighs a ridiculous amount of tonnage. Yeah. So these two things, well, that's one of them, but there's two of them. They bolt on top of that and it goes up 65 feet. Wow. See what I mean? Yeah. Give you some scale. There's two, two guys standing here. Those are two. <laughs> And you know what? You couldn't even see them. That's how almost insignificant they were in the picture, size-wise. It's unbelievable yeah. how daunting that is. Even this Amazing, catwalk right? shot on the right. I mean, that looks like the inside of a manufacturing facility on its own. You yeah. know, Amazing, I know it's inside right? of one, but just the way it's set up on the left and right. The well, the building that own. it's in, where 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 this is being manufactured, the ceiling is sixty-five feet high. So just of fresh photos this is yesterday so this is the same unit that we we're just looking at yeah arriving on site by truck totally housed see see how it sits on pilings yep there it's craned onto pilings and then that's the the backbone is in behind and then there's a module that a connector module that will just bolt up the, the stuff i guess i should tell you that that basically what the aiming unit does is the aiming unit with aiming towers uh, quite simply what it does is it takes the raw gas uh, it wets it and what it is used for is to remove co2 um, and in the case of natural gas it would also remove uh, hydrogen sulfide uh, we don't have any hydrogen sulfide so it's just removing the co2 um, as we've talked before we are looking to monetize uh, the CO2 that, that this thing strips out, but it, it's, it's sort of a critical component of the whole thing anyway, a natural gas or, or a helium plant. Um, just another component, like there's, there's quite a few of these things, but this one's kind of cool. Uh, what you'll see, this is called, this end of it's called a cryogenic, uh, component. So it, it, it's taking that gas stream. And in this video, you'll see on the left-hand side, another sort of looks like two towers. And what that does is it removes the water that you've introduced when you're doing the, the, the aiming unit extraction. And it further refines, this will further refine um, uh, the gas stream. Unbelievable. Roll so that video. I, sh I shorten this quite a bit, but it'll just give you an idea. Like the this thing, the cryogenic wow. unit. So wow. these wow. the these things and and here the cold box operates at minus one hundred ninety one hundred minus one hundred ninety eight degrees C. 
that is some serious hardware in terms of both performance and how it looks. That's serious yeah. hardware. Dean, let me ask okay. something. Let me ask something just for yeah. a quick moment. Obviously, you guys are well versed in all this. You've had the vision. You knew what it would turn into if you guys executed. And here you are. Do you guys, or do you? Maybe I'll speak just for you, but do you still get a little excited, a little almost like a kid watching this big monster machine come into life and coming together? Oh, it's 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 absolutely amazing. Um, you know, I've I've seen natural gas plants before, but you sort of picture these big black iron tanks and pipes and things like this thing is it's, look how beautiful it is it's amazing shiny and new okay. it's fantastic so this is the back end of of of, of the cryo plant uh, there's two of these the other one you kind of is hidden back here right. uh, again this is the, the mole seed kind of removes the water from that previous process and then it goes to cryogenics which you'll see here. So the mole, mole sieve on the left here, I, I think I pan right. And then as you pan right, this is the cryo section. That's the cold box. You kind of can't see it, but it's black here. Serious. Right. So that that's cryogenics. And then can they put my body in there one day if I die? And and uh, so while you, because you guys are producing helium longer than I live, probably, uh, you know, can, can can I bury myself there or keep myself there temporarily until they come up with a cure for whatever I die of? <laughs> yeah, there's looks like a little bucket here, right, for you. All right, just put my name on that, will you? And let them know that's the George yeah. bucket. Yeah. And then now these two things, or three things I'm going to show you here is, and they're obviously not the they go with this other part, but I just wanted to, to explain how things work here. So what you're going to see is this front pipe is called a hydrogen reactor. And basically what that does uh, is remove the, the hydrogen from the stream. So see what you do, you take this raw gas, you take out the carbon dioxide, right? Then you take the, then you take the water that you used because uh, the gas is dry. So you use water to remove the carbon dioxide, then you remove the water, then you start removing other things. So with hydrogen, it's a hydrogen reactor, um, basically similar so that um, um, you use oxygen and, and a reaction so that, that, that basically you take the hydrogen off the stream and make water. And behind it is, 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 the next step, which would be to take the methane or the natural gas out. So same idea, it kind of strips it out of the, the raw stream. I'll play this video for you. Off to the right, as I pan to the right at the end, there's a bigger unit and that one, it takes the nitrogen out. Now, again, these aren't complete obviously, because but they're, I just wanted to point, yeah. point out that, so that big one there, that's the nitrogen. So all that comes into play into, into this particular unit here. Um, here I just gave, a, I just wanted to show you kind of what the shop looks like. It's one, two, like three, four, maybe six Check times the whole place the is dedicated to Royal Helium. Yep. Now, of course, a lot of these things are gone now, so they can get other guys in there to build their thing. So th this was early days of the fuel gas module. See, see, relative to everything else, this is the smallest one, right? This is the heat medium. So it's a little bit larger. Both of those are on site already. Uh, I just listed some things in case people are wondering what's on site already. So we've got the uh, air instrument, uh, air, it's a control module, fuel gas, heat medium, which you see here, aiming cooler and condenser are there, MCC, so that's control, control building is there, uh, those six generators are there, water tank, propane, you saw the big propane thing there, flare stacks for this thing, uh, fuel gas is there, aiming unit, as I mentioned, just arrived yesterday, uh, a couple more still to come, and many small units with all the the connectors and all that is the PSA, the pressure swing absorption. 
What the pressure swing absorption or PSA unit does is it further refines the helium uh, after you do all this other stuff. It's kind of what refines it down to 99.9999% helium, five, five nines if I said it right. And that cryo plant is, 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 I believe it's ready to go and it will be one of the next things to, to be transported uh, over. Yeah, so. Like it seems like the whole process, once it got started, you know, because obviously we remember Andrew telling us last year, there's some supply chain issues. You have to wait a little bit. Since mm -hmm. it started, it seems like it's, has it been pretty hiccup free? I mean, nothing is perfect, but it seems yeah, like it's no, no, it, nice it's, it, it's gone along really well. I mean, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, like almost all industries were experiencing some supply chain issues, you know, whether it's a bucket of, tubing and valves or whatever, but all pretty minor. Um, you know, what normally would take four months is four to six months or six months is maybe taken eight months or something like that. So, you know, we're a little bit behind, but I mean, have a look at all the stuff. Yeah, <laughs> once it got going and you got over the thing, it just like, seems, it's just amazing how this seems like knock on wood. It's not done yet, but it seemed you were weeks away. It seemed like everything's and every, is everything pretty much everything fabricated? Like has the yeah, you guys pretty done much the, everything is fabricated. Here. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, you know, there there's there's valves and and stuff that 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 are purchasable, but like you know, a lot of this stuff is all fabricated right here in this shop, welders and cutters and stuff like that. So. Absolutely amazing to see these guys work. Um, I thought I'd show you then the actual um, That's well, well site. So on the left here, just a second. Um, I'm just driving in my truck. So this is the well the, on the right there, that tree is actually the wellhead. Uh, and we're about 200 meters from the plant site. So in the background, right about now, that's the plant. Right. So we're 200 meters away from the plant. Right. So that, that that's a 12 12 well. So going through uh, the set of valves on the end there, that pipe goes down under the ground and 200 meters over to the site. And on the right hand side, this is what the well riser looks like. So on the right hand side, that's what you see on site. And the left side, that was the actual wellhead, and they're connected by pipe. Obviously, we're doing two wells. Great so photo there's another on. great photo. There's, on. Yeah, there's another one of those, and it's about uh, almost eight kilometers to the north. So off to screen right. Um, yeah. And then I, you know, wanted to. This is sort of my last photo here, unless you have any questions, George. But uh, so we have four of these trailers. In each trailer, there's four isotubes. So they look like big cigar tubes that fill up that whole trailer. They're specifically designed for helium. Um, you can transport them a limited degree, but you know, kind of over several days, you know, which what well, equates to several hundred kilometers, I guess, or anyway, we're, we're trucking the gas down to uh, Colorado. Um, so you will lose a little bit of helium anytime you try and transport it, but that short a period of time and distance, uh, you shouldn't leave a lot. You now, but here's somebody out there is going to be following <laughs> those trucks. Yeah. Cause you know, yeah. everyone on Twitter is trying to figure out Who's a space launch company? Who's a space launch company? So, don't be surprised so, if you have a uh, couple of Canadian cars following you all the way to Colorado trying to figure it out. Yeah, well, good luck with that because, um, um, well, I guess not. Uh, because the customer will be picking up the liquid helium in Colorado um, uh, in a different similar idea but they're it, it's it's their iso containers for liquid helium so ours are for gas gaseous helium theirs is liquid helium um just to reiterate again 
um, our offtake agreements, both of them, uh, they average about seven hundred and ten dollars Canadian per MCF on average. Uh, that is net of that is the net price that we get because the customer is paying for the transportation as a gas to the liquefier. They're paying for the liquefaction in Colorado, and they're paying for the transportation of the liquid to their end site, wherever it may be. So that's very important. The other thing that's really key here that people, it's, it differs from oil and gas is because you can't store helium as a gas very long, uh, which includes inside the plant itself. So you don't want to shut the plant off either, right? The way you can kill it would be to shut the well itself off, but you don't want to be turning the well on and off either. You want it to flow smoothly. So the reason that we have four of these trailers is once the plant is turned on, there will always be an empty trailer backed up, filling up. So as soon as it's full, it takes off for a day and a half drive down to Colorado. And the second truck is already parked and it's diverted to the second truck, right? And then the first truck arrives down in Colorado, it unloads. When it's empty, it heads back to Alberta. So it's a constant stream. Yeah. You, you, just, yeah. you just don't want to turn off the plant. So... It sounds weird, but it, it it's good in two aspects. Obviously, from um, production and cash flow point of view, the plant is running twenty four seven, and the takeaway is taking away a hundred percent of whatever is produced, also twenty four, like in a constant motion. Right. So impressive, um, man. Impressive, man. This has been. This has been really awesome. And even to show us right down the end here, you know, to show us right down yeah. the end, how it's going to get shipped out and all that. Um, the only thing that's going to be left is, I don't know, when production actually begins the first day, when someone hits the go button or whatever, uh, I'm <laughs> sure that's going to be a big day down there for, for the company, for shareholders, for the government probably, because I know they've been, you know, they're, they're really anxious and, and supportive about all this. And uh, I'm assuming you're going to be there we should probably yep. be doing a live interview from there, from your phone. Oh, I, I, I would, I would love to do that. And um, so, what I'd like to say is, no, George. Like the next thing isn't going to be um, delivering the first thing of gas. So, what if this video works well, and if we can edit it down to something in more bite-sized pieces or something? uh you know we would like to to do more updates as as the okay. psa yeah, let's unit, do it. the psa shows up and then maybe another video of of them hooking one of the modules up and then obviously an aerial video of of that backbone now with like you know big thing here and here and here and here and here and here and here as as it all comes together so you know that We'd like to keep everybody up to speed as to how, how things are going here. This is fantastic. Dean, I got to tell you, man, I mean, a picture is worth a thousand words, but a picture with you narrating uh, is just invaluable. I got to tell you, I found it incredibly valuable. And I'm sure even with all the experts we have on Twitter, a lot of smart people who are Royal Helium shareholders and, and, and you know, who people who are watching the company, most of them don't even know what all this does. Uh, and to see you go through it like that, to see it come to life, coming together, you know, from that empty lot to the spine to the pieces starting to get delivered and slowly bolted on and more to come from you and I. I mean, uh, this could be historical. Look, it's, we're documenting the first ever, you said, the first ever helium plant in Alberta, right? Yep. We're documenting it here. And I can't thank you enough, Dean. Honestly, this is amazing. It was really well done. And, uh, and I can't wait to have you back for the next one. I don't know, a couple of weeks, whatever you think. Yep. Uh, it'll, there'll be a couple of updates that we can uh, definitely do for you here. And this one is probably the longest in the sense that trying to explain like how these things right. piece together, you know, they're not just stacked on top of each other or something. There's, it's quite different. So um, the next updates I think we could do 
fairly quickly. Just you know, quick update. You yeah, know, those be PSA, You know, here, here's the cryo unit uh, arriving. But, no. but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, this has been 45 minutes. But any serious investor of Royal Helium has been has been and will be watching this happily. Like time flies when you're watching this because you're watching your investment come to life and coming to life. And I think that's amazing, buddy. And uh, what a great way to end the week and to do this. And uh, and I can't wait to see everyone's feedback, Dean. And can't wait to have you back, my friend. Perfect. Thanks, buddy. For everybody at home, usually I'll say you've been watching or listening by podcast, but you can't be listening to this by podcast because it's all visual. So uh, hopefully what you realize at the very beginning, hit pause, went to YouTube and watched this. But you've been watching Dean Nawada, employee number two and head of biz dev over Royal Helium. As you can see over, over at Dean's shoulder, trades in Canada into the symbol RHC. But for our friends in the U.S., RHCCF. Thanks for joining us, guys. Hope you loved it. Leave your comments on YouTube. Leave your comments on Twitter. Can't wait to hear your feedback. Thanks for joining us. See you on the next one. Hey, guys. The video's over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss another great Agoracom small cap video.